These were the highlights from our very first office hours. Question number one is a popular one. How do I manage hundreds of email accounts in my general infrastructure? What we've seen is as more people have moved across to Smart Lead, the understanding and concept of email infrastructure becomes more and more important. So now here's a quick, simple way to de-risk yourself when setting up an entire email infrastructure to ensure you've got consistent, healthy ad band that generates revenue for you. Here's how we approach it if you're using Gmail in particular. You want to ensure that you have a single workspace that's got 10 domains to that workspace. Now, most of the time, there is no limitation on a domain specific approach, unless you're using a third party DNS provider that gives you the email addresses to do. That is the usual time when you see domain specific restrictions on sending volume. Otherwise, if you're going with the popular tools, you will see almost never anything to do with domain level sending. I mean, you can imagine larger companies don't exactly have restrictions on the number of accounts they have on the domain. Great, so you wanna have 10 domains. To those 10 domains, you want to go ahead and create about two to three mailboxes. Again, the reason is there's no specificity or science behind this. It's simply to de-risk the fact that if one of these mailboxes gets hit with spam or blacklisting, the reputation of a mailbox is attached to the domain that it's owned to versus the mailbox itself. So while it goes up together, it also comes down together. What this does mean is it protects you from a situation where you do have a domain that's blacklisted or it's hit or it's just landing to spam due to pure reputation. Then you're losing at a maximum of two to three domains. And in a large scale, that's, you know, two to three into 10 mailboxes. So that's about 30, which you're losing, give or take about 10% of your entire volume, which you can easily recover from. Now, from each of these mailboxes, you wanna be sending anywhere between 35 to 50 emails every single day, including your warmups. Now, the question originally was, how do I maintain 100 mailboxes? Now, since we've got this ratio set up to give or take about 20 mailboxes for this particular workspace, I would set up multiple parallel workspaces to go ahead and assure you've got a spread. Now, the reason why we have this spread again is simply for the fact that we have seen sometimes where where if you have a mailbox or an account or a domain particularly blacklisted, what ends up happening is on that particular place, all the other domains that are owned under that workspace start trickling down and start getting affected as well. It's, it happens sometimes. So again, all of this is to restrict any form of large scale disconnections or issues that you might end up facing. So that is what I would do if I were to set up 100 mailboxes and easily and, and you know securely scale and manage those. Now, this was question number two and something that we're starting to see some people experience over here. And it seems to be a bug on Gmail that we ourselves are trying to figure out a solution for. And the question is, sometimes when I send emails, this receiver that gets the email shows the actual email address that I own versus my name. At first, we thought there might be something to look at the platform and the OAuth section, but then what you end up seeing is, and this is a test for you, is go into your actual Gmail, Outlook, or whatever account you own and send an email from there, from the UI itself, to maybe another mailbox that you own. And if you see, even in that situation, that the email address shows up, then it's simply something on these ESP provider side that there's no known answer for at the moment. We ourselves are researching and trying to figure out why that happens. But what we've seen for the most part, sometimes it's just a matter of stabilization and it takes somewhere between two to four days for these platforms to just resync your name and show it automatically to that other leads perspective mailbox. So it's just sometimes a waiting game, but sometimes it's not. And so for that reason, we're trying to figure out an answer ourselves for us for you. And um, because we manage over 200,000 mailboxes and this obviously becomes a common question people have. It's not a widespread thing. It's only for new mailboxes sometimes where people will set up 50 mailboxes and only affect two or three. So it might be a volume based thing, but regardless, like I said, we're trying to figure it out. We'll give you an answer maybe by the next time you watch the next uh, Office Hours videos. Now the third question is a cool one. How do I interpret DMARC reports? Now DMARC reports are very fascinating reports that will help let you understand the overall health of your mailbox, the health of your leads, um, how many times you get in reported as spam, how many, you know, your general health in terms of your deliverability, your score, and, and your sending report. The easiest way to start understanding and interpreting these things because it can look like jargon at times, is use third-party tools like Glock Apps or Mail Tester, uh, the dedicated tools that will help you break down your DMARC reports and help you understand exactly the health of your mailbox. And it's something very important you should definitely be doing if you're not doing it at all. The other question parallel to this is how do I reroute all these messages that I get, for example, to catch 
to, to handle and manage catch-alls in a situation to prevent your account from being suspended. What we generally recommend for people to address and manage with catch-alls is using third-party tools that exist in the market. There's only one I can recommend that we personally trust and that's called Scrubby.io. They actually have a combination of Gmail and Outlook accounts and, and a bunch of other cool stuff that I don't know what they do to manage ensuring that any leads that you have in your account list that is pulled down from your side. From that verified list, what you want to do is ensure you never actually use those catch-all emails. You want to pull down those catch-alls because you don't want to lose a good value. You send them to Scrubby and then that will go ahead and verify these by manually sending out emails and collecting these bounces and sending you back a report of what are actually safe and not safe. Because the premise behind catch-all emails are basically domain and security level where they're almost whitelisting an entire domain, making you think that the email is actually available or valid, but it's actually not. And that can cause a long tail effect on deprecating your mailbox, their reputation, as well as hurting your overall deliverability itself. So that's what I would do in this particular case. And the third one is a common one that we're seeing people do is they're moving away from Zoho to something like Gmail and Outlook since Zoho had a bit of an issue with the entire Adban experience itself a few months ago. So the solution over here, the question is, if I move everything from Zoho to Gmail, will Smartly actually pick up all the replies and will Smartly actually ensure that everything stays consistent. Now there's two things to understand over here. If you actually go ahead and move your mailbox from Zoho to Gmail, do know that you're adding effectively new MX records and these are actual new accounts. So they're not per se on a DNS level, old accounts. These are new accounts that you're porting across. So you will need to do some sort of warm up, even though per se your domain is warmed up, but it has been moved to a new DNS infrastructure, a new IP pool, as well as a new MX infrastructure as well. So that's one thing you wanna keep in mind. The second thing to consider is, will my replies still be tracked? Yes, as long as you've set up some form of auto forwarding from your old account to your new account, if that is a thing that Zoho provides. Otherwise, as long as the emails land in your particular mailbox, that is the same mailbox, and that reply is a response to a message that you sent from Smartlead, you do not need to worry it will pick up all the responses directly in the master inbox as long as you reconnect those accounts. As long as you reconnect those accounts, you, the Zoho accounts are now becoming Gmail accounts. And as long as you reconnect them within Smartlead with the new updated information, and we have access to pull that information straight from your inbox, uh, which we do when you click on connect, you should be perfectly, perfectly fine to allow for that smooth transition to happen. So these are the three main questions that were asked amongst the others that we answered very quickly, but hopefully this gives you a quick highlight on what you need to focus on when you're trying to go ahead and manage a large number of mailboxes, interpret your DMARC report, or if you're doing large scale transition of accounts from one provider to another within the platform. Have a fantastic day and I will see you for the next one very, very, very soon.